In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. No other story challenges our worldview like the creation of the cosmos, except perhaps the resurrection. Because it raises a lot of questions, and to be perfectly blunt, how you answer these questions defines what you believe about the Bible and God. So what do you really believe? The world's turning its back on the creation story, and sadly, so are many professing Christians. What do I mean? Many people are trying to create unity between a scientific, secular worldview and a biblical worldview. The creation story confronts us with a choice. We literally cannot hold on to what non-believers hold to be true and the creation story. And that's precisely what I'm going to ask you to think about today. Do you accept the creation story is true? I've wrestled with this story a lot and encourage you to really think about these scriptures to make your faith your own, and to know why you believe what you do. As you look at and study the creation story, it's important to recognize that this is a story that we can use as a measure or a standard of what we actually believe. Do you believe the Bible is true in every sense of the word? Do you believe in a God big enough to create the world in six days? Do you believe the world has meaning and we should take care of it? Do you believe people have inherent value? Why? Real quick, I want to tell you about these awesome resources I used to study Genesis. Check out the Knowing the Bible series by Crossway. They're 12-week study uh, Bible study curriculums. And so as you study, you'll prepare yourself to host a Bible study one day or just learn a bunch of cool stuff to help you understand the Bible more fully so that you can live it out. And we've got Ed Clowney's book on seeing Jesus in the Old Testament called The Unfolding Mystery. This book has really helped me to think about putting stories like creation and Jesus' resurrection in context of the entire Bible. And it goes super deep, and at the end of each section, it has great questions to really guide you through it. It's probably the number one book I'd recommend for people who want to study the Bible themselves, because it doesn't just teach you how to study, uh, but also how to form a gospel-centered biblical worldview. So what does the creation story say? Genesis 1, 1 through 3. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. God created everything out of nothing. God is forever. He's eternal. And that is hard to wrap our head around. God speaks and creates light. He speaks it into existence and separates it from darkness and then calls it good. On day two, God separates the waters and creates heaven. On day three, God creates the earth and the seas and the plants. And it says according to their kinds. When I wrestled with evolution and modern scientific theory and Darwinian viewpoints, I tried to compare them to the Bible. I had a lot of questions and I realized that this verse really kills the arguments for evolution. I know people either love or hate Ken Ham, but he has some very good insights into these verses. In fact, even atheist scientists are rethinking evolution simply from a logical perspective. It simply doesn't make sense. The Bible says according to their kinds. So while there can be variations and survival mechanisms built in, new types do not come out of different types. In fact, some evolutionary biologists have recently discovered that DNA has built in mechanisms to prevent mutations that affect core identity. This puts a stake through the heart of evolution in my mind. Now this is a hot issue, so put in the comments what you think about this. Can you believe evolution and creation at the same time? So on day four, God creates the sun, moon, and stars. On day five, the fish and the birds. And day six is a big one, animals and man. Genesis 1, 26 through 27. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Man is made in God's image. So we see the Bible explicitly teaching that man's inherent value is held because he's made in the image of God. Every bit of creation is made to glorify God, which is made solely out of his loving abundance. This is also evidence of the triune nature of God. Let us make man in our image. This passage points us to the truth, as we see in Genesis 2, that man is made from dirt. We're dust people, fragile and broken. But each one of us has value as a creation and image bearer of God. And it's so simple but profound. This is a major problem with an atheistic worldview. There's no basis for human dignity and value that's not subjective, that isn't based on people's feelings. To an atheist, everyone is valuable because of themselves. They think they're valuable, so they are. But the problem is that no one else has to respect or acknowledge or appeal to that value. 
To a Christian, everyone has value and dignity because they're an image bearer of God. And this is also why Christians have an explicit command to take care of the world. God created it and it's good. It wasn't made by random chance, but every detail was intentional and being sustained by God every second of every day. So a consistent atheist viewpoint would be that it, it was created by random chance, so whatever happens to the earth happens, right? There's no ultimate meaning to anything without God. Finally, on day seven, God rests. So here's the big daddy question to see if you have a big uh, biblical worldview. One of the hangups that I had for a long time was the question, did God create the world in six literal days? And this is a tough question. Uh, there's actual exegesis or word studies on the word used for day in the creation account, and it can mean a literal day or it can mean an age, as in a period of time. There's lots of evidence, though, that it's used in the literal sense in Genesis. So the question is, if you had to believe that the world was created in six literal days, would you accept that as truth? I'm not sure that you have to believe in a literal six-day creation, but the creation story is God's word to us. So the point of this question is to figure out if we will accept the Bible as the inspired word of God, or if we read the Bible with a different worldview. Put a comment down there. Do you think we have to believe in a literal six-day creation? Ultimately, I decided that while it's fun to wrestle with this story and study the underlying Hebrew words, if I had to say God created the world in six literal days, I would. If we believe that the Bible is God's word, then that's the end of the discussion, right? In fact, I think it's more fun that way, actually, especially after studying Darwinism and the atheist worldview. I think it's rather laughable that they would mock the idea of creation or a creator. There are some simple truths out of creation that we simply must accept, and they're true regardless of whether or not the days were literal. God created everything, and he did it in an intentional, ordered way. God is all-powerful and owns the cosmos and everything in it because he created it. God's eternal. He existed before any creation and will exist always. Man's made in the image of God and has inherent dignity and value. The value of the earth and man comes as a consequence of being created by God. Man was created male and female. Anyone else think it's pretty funny that the Bible's more sciency on this than, you know, actual scientists these days? If you want to study this passage a little more, then go through the text and write down questions that you have. Throughout all of creation, there are questions that we can ask, like, is light a symbol? Is it literal light or is it both? Where else do we see light used in scripture? Why was every day called good by God except for day two? What does it mean that God created the light before the sun, moon, and stars? And why would ancient people write that down? What similarities are there between creation and the theories of evolution and the Big Bang? Or how about why does God rest? We covered a lot of ground here, and I want to encourage you right now, not all of the Bible is as dense as the creation story. So stick with it. Learn the stories. I know some people geek out like me, but other, uh, other people would just like to have concrete answers. So put any questions, comments, or concerns down below in the comments, and let's get this party started. Hey, don't forget to grab your free Bible reading tracker from the link in the description, and make sure you subscribe to get updated content from a Reformed perspective on studying the Bible. I'll be praying for you as you wrestle to have a biblical worldview.